What's up guys, I hope everyone is doing well. So a lot of you have been criticising me lately for reviewing expensive products, especially when it comes to graphics cards, motherboards, cases, etc etc. So I have taken that on board and from now on I will be reviewing some more budget friendly stuff as well as reviewing the more expensive high end components that we do already. So starting from today we are going to look at the Gigabyte Z270X Ultra Gaming. So for £140 here in the UK and around $160 in the US, it's definitely not cheap but it is a more budget offering in the Z270 range and although this is Gigabyte's kind of starter board in the Z270 lineup, it is still packed with loads of features like RGB fusion and a nice audio setup so let's jump in and take a look at it. So as always let's just take a minute to look at the design. I have said this many times before and I will say it again, I love when board manufacturers go for that more stealth and clean look as it allows the system builder to make their own choices for theming their build so this definitely gets a thumbs up for me for sure. The black brushed aluminium heat sinks also look beautiful and give this board a premium look. Taking a look around you will see that we have reinforced RAM slots and while I'm not sure how useful these are, the chrome is certainly a nice touch and also in between the RAM slots you will find one of the many RGB lighting zones that I will show you later. Moving on to the PCIe slots and these are also reinforced which is a nice touch especially if you rock a large bulky graphics card this will come in super handy. So as this is a Z270 board we have the 1151 socket that I will be filling with my 7700K so it will definitely be interesting to see if I can manage to get that 5GHz overclock on a more budget board that I have been achieving on all these expensive boards out there. Just below the socket you will also find your M.2 slot for that super fast storage. Speaking of storage there are two upward facing SATA ports on the board as well as one U.2, two SATA Express and another four SATA ports on the side so there are plenty of options here for your storage needs. Taking a look at the bottom you will see the amp up audio solution that is used on more expensive boards so it's definitely nice to see it here and we also have an RGB strip header if you want to connect some lighting up and have it sync with the board. There are also plenty of fan headers dotted around the board as well as a pump header for anyone running water cooling and two front IO USB 3.0 ports next to each other if you need that extra one of course. So last of all on the rear IO you will find two USB 2 ports with a PS2 combo, DVI, USB-C and 3.1, HDMI and two USB 3.0 two more USB 2.0 ports with an ethernet and also all of your usual audio support. So let's take a look at the LED lighting. As you can see the board is definitely well lit up and is super customizable utilizing the Fusion software. As expected you can choose from static colors as well as a multitude of effects like the seizure inducing flashing that I am pretty sure no one uses but if you do definitely let me know down below in the comment section because I cannot imagine having a PC next to me that is flashing on and off like this but who am I? Let me know below. So when it comes to the software I have to say it is one of the best that I have used to date. It is super easy to navigate and get the look you are after and it updates almost instantly when you change the colour. You can of course choose between basic mode or jump into advanced mode where you can go in and totally customise the board to your liking. Overall if you like RGB you will definitely not be disappointed. Ok so I hopped into the BIOS and jumped into classic mode and found it pretty straightforward to navigate. I will say however that if you are not used to overclocking motherboards finding some menus may prove a little difficult but I definitely had no trouble here. The BIOS offers plenty of options and you can also access the SmartFan 5 settings as well as the RGB settings in here if you prefer. Overall the BIOS wasn't too terrible and I easily managed to get that 5GHz overclock on the 7700K so I was definitely impressed with that and it did run pretty stable after some stringent testing. Ok so let's wrap this up. If you're looking to jump onto the Z270 platform then the Ultra Gaming from Gigabyte is definitely a great choice. It is missing a few key features found on more expensive motherboards but all the essentials are definitely here. The board looks awesome and if you like RGB you are definitely covered and it managed to pull off the overclock that I was looking for so I definitely have no complaints. If you have any questions about this motherboard let me know down below and you know I will definitely get back to you. 
As always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Don't